Hi, I'm Joan LaBarbera. I'm a composer and vocalist, and we're sitting here today talking about the music that I'll be performing on the Interpretations concert that I'll be doing on February 20th, uh, 2014, at Roulette. And I'll be doing two works. One of them is called Solitary Journeys of the Mind. It's um, essentially an improvisation, a real-time composition, uh, based on um, the initial vocal utterance uh, that comes out of me and how I work with that, um, creating a composition on the spot. The other work is a piece called Windows, which is um, a, a, a complicated collage um, tapestry, let's say, of different sounds that make up a sonic atmosphere. And, and uh, how I work with that as a solo vocalist in, again, in real time. So the sonic atmosphere is fixed, but what I do with it uh, is very different from one performance to another. One of my processes as a composer um, is to start with an idea and then to do stream of consciousness writing, uh, just trying to uh, get all of the ideas that I have about a particular topic out and I try not to censor in any way and once I've, I've finished doing that process I then go back and I reread what I've written and try to find the music um, in the words. Yeah, in this particular case what I've done is sometimes to go to Virginia Woolf's words um, more recently, I've been working with uh, fragments of dreams from uh, the writings and the journals of Joseph Cornell. Um, and uh, they're, they're very brief, sometimes only two or three words, uh, sometimes um, a fragment of maybe ten words at the most. But the idea is that I, I go from um, a visual idea. Uh, put into language and then go from that language into a sonic idea. Um, not exactly a representation of the visual idea, but um, an interpretation, let's say, uh, of that visual idea. So let's say, for example, um, girls in their stone uniforms. That, that gives me a, a kind of sonic idea. Um, or there's a longer dream uh, where Cornell saw the full moon in the sky um, and then it, it seemed uh, like a, a silver orb that descended like a basketball and became the head of a figure uh, floating horizontally in space a few feet off the ground wearing a vermilion cape. So that's a very rich idea. And how one turns that into sound is the kind of magic uh, I think that being a composer is, is all about. Joseph Cornell was a visual artist, an American visual artist, who created these beautiful little boxes. Um, his whole process had to do with dreams. And so um, his working process actually had to do with sleeping, um, dreaming, and then awaking from a dream, but trying not to awaken so completely that he lost touch with that area of the subconscious. Um, he comes right out of, of symbolism, uh, surrealism. He actually worked with Marcel Duchamp um, when Duchamp was um, making a, a kind of coffee table box edition of the large glass. Um, Cornell's works were, as I said, very small. Um, they come from the dreams. They've been referred to as perhaps magical, mystical. Um, there's a lot of imagery of the sky the, the stars, constellations, um, birds, um, cages where the bird has flown, um, sometimes looking out through windows. And um, so this whole idea of, of 
windows, whether we're looking in through windows in a kind of wireistic way, um, looking at something that, that um, perhaps we shouldn't be looking at, uh, or whether we're looking out of windows and observing uh, that which is out in the outside world. So all of these ideas um, are part of what I've been putting into this piece. The process that I, that I use to construct my sonic atmospheres, um, that's what I call what we used to refer to as the tape park. Um, I'll go through um, a series of recordings and then um, go back and, and put everything into Pro Tools and fragment. So I'm, I'm creating collages out of different fragments. Um, some of what goes into the sonic atmosphere are natural sounds. Some of it um, includes recordings of my own voice, recordings of instruments. And then what I do in live performance, whether I'm working with an ensemble, for instance, Next Works, uh, with whom I've worked since, um, well, since about 2002, um, or whether I'm, I'm building uh, a construct that I'll sing live over by myself. Um, they're, they're, these are just various ways of using the sonic atmosphere as a kind of soundscape or landscape or um, sometimes actually uh, something that I play against, um, I'll improvise with, so that each performance of a work, even though the sonic atmosphere is fixed, what I do with it changes uh, greatly from one performance to another. I've done a lot of work over the years with a number of different composers, and um, I actually feel that I learned a great deal by working with different composers. Um, exploring the ideas that they had uh, led me into um, my own thoughts about composition. And so I, I feel that um, I, I study basically as an apprentice. It's a, a kind of very traditional and old-fashioned way of studying, where you work with a master, and you learn the master's technique, and then move on from one master to another, um, and uh, learn as you go. And that has certainly been um, the process that I've, I've gone through. Um, in the early part of my career, I worked with uh, Steve Reich and Philip Glass. I did a lot of work with John Cage, worked with him for about 20 years, and learned a great deal from him. I actually consider him my mentor. Um, I also worked a lot with um, the members of the Sonic Arts Union, with David Behrman and Robert Ashley and Alvin Lussier, and I actually continue working with the three of them. Um, I never worked with Gordon Moma. Uh, I, I um, appreciate Gordon's work a lot, but um, he never wrote anything for me. Um, and I, of course, worked with Morton Sabotnik uh, on several uh, different pieces. So over the years, I've, I've worked with a number of, of composers who have very, very different ideas and use the voice in a very different way and engaged uh, my mind in very different ways. Um, I was trained as a classical singer. Uh, at a certain point, I moved out of, of the realm of classical music into uh, the world of jazz and new music, um, electronics. I felt that that area satisfied a need in me to explore ideas and um, to use the voice in new and unusual ways. Um, whether it be with electronics or just exploring uh, the myriad of possibilities that are available from the natural voice. We're always coming up with ideas that are, are based on our uh, relationship to um, what, what an idea gives to us or what an idea asks from us. Um, so if, if I construct a piece of music, if I write everything out, um, and then I have it played by an ensemble. Um, 
What I'm also interested in is not just getting an absolute representation of those notes, but what each individual musician can bring to that. Um, what other ideas uh, they might have. Um, how they might amplify it. How, how they might um, decorate or embellish that idea, which is what I bring to any kind of musical situation myself.